the all American classic jarred spaghetti sauce. Don't let the label fool you. It doesn't matter what jar you use, it's typically the same. No matter what flavor concept, no matter what flavor, flavor profile. But how do we take this and go to here? most people you come home from work you're tired you just want to get the dinner on the table so you go to the grocery store and you buy your jar of spaghetti sauce honestly i think we change this about as much as we change dish soap or whatever it is there's never the one go-to that we just look at and we're like that is the literally the best thing and we don't have to add anything to it and i struggled with the title poor man's bolognese uh, tips, tricks, and secrets to an kicked up jarred spaghetti sauce. Whatever it is, it does not matter. It's a tongue twister. It needs to be said. It needs to be proven. And with just a couple of pantry staple ingredients, we're going to turn just ground beef, sausage, and just jarred spaghetti sauce into something that we have developed into like an absolute classic. It is a Williams Family Classic. Let's get started. All right. Ground beef. Here is a tip, tech tip of the week, however you want to say it. Although it is 80-20, I am going to add just a little bit more fat because it's all about the browning. If there's one thing I can say about the whole dish that I promise you, if you take time to do it, it's a game changer. And I'm going to debunk the people that comment below and say, oh, that's not true. Oh, I do it this, I do it that way. Anybody can do it any way they want to. But when you do a smash burger, what are you? why are you smashing it? Because you want the crust. When you take a beef pot roast, you hear them all the time, sear it first. Uh, a steak, what's the point of a steak? You never just boil steak. You put it on the grill, you put it on a flat top, you put anywhere. You're looking for that char, that caramelization of the meat. So why can we not do that with the ground beef itself? you got to cook it past the point of all the moisture and let the fat cook the beef. It is a game changer. And something as simple as spaghetti sauce for dinner, just take a little bit more time and the effort is well worth it. All right, just a little bit of avocado. Oil. Oil. That's true. And all we're going to do is brown this off and brown it off and brown it off. So we're going to get that started. Okay? I get a carry knife. What kind of sausage? Let's come over here because I think it might be loud. To get a really, really good ragu, it's a, it's a combination of meats, veal, pork, beef, and it's braised for a long time. So we're trying to speed that process up. Or you just looked up like basically how to kick up a jarred uh, spaghetti sauce. Well, you know that if you follow me, anytime you can add flavor to something without going the extra mile, it is well worth it. So all we have is some sweet Italian sausage in the casing, just take the casing out. We're gonna put that in there. Look at all that fat. It's already got the flavor profile and you know it's about building flavors, all right? Same thing with this other one. Now, I buy the packages where I buy one pack at a, or two packs at a time. I buy one pack hot and one pack sweet because you guys know my kids will absolutely come unglued if they think something's spicy in there. But that's just the process. I'm telling you, just let it go, let it go, let it go. Doesn't matter if it's chunky, doesn't matter if it's finely ground, all that is irrelative. Is that the right word? Irrelevant. Irrelevant. All right guys, so this is browned off it pretty quick. And uh, this is what I'm talking about. Typically, not everybody, and I'm not saying you or you or you in the back, 
But this is typically the time you would just take the, the beef off and strain it, drain it, or just add whatever you want to. But that's not what we're doing. We're building flavor. And the best way to take something from here and to go here is capitalize on the ingredients that you already have. So that's what we're going to do. Turn it down just a little bit. First of all, that's a lot of moisture. Second of all, that's a lot of fat, okay? So all we're gonna do is fry this beef in its fat. And I don't know if you could tell by the camera because of all the steam, but right now there's a lot of grayish color. And hopefully when we come back, we're gonna show you that the beef itself has turned brown. Why? Because it's caramelizing in that fat and that changes the, pl the flavor profile so much. All right, guys, you guys see how much browning we're getting with all that fat left over? That's what we're talking about. That's how that beef is getting like caramelized. And that is the depth of flavor that I'm talking about. Just be patient. Mix, oh, look at all that. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. That's that, cr that's that just intense beef flavor that you can't get if you rush this process. So just take your time. If you want to add your vegetables, you can. I'm just showing you just how we like to do it. There's probably more varieties on how to do this than there's probably any other thing out there besides a scrambled egg. But just take your time, let the beef fry, and I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Let's do this. I'm gonna show you guys how much fat's in here. All right, guys, all I did was push my ground beef up on the edge. Now, the last... I don't know, 15, 20 years, I would have added everything in this pot and just went with it, fat and all. But my doctor says I need to cut out my fat, so all I'm going to do is put a paper towel in there. You're more than welcome to strain it, but I find this works just as well. It's not a big deal. I'm not, I'm not trying to get it like 100% fat free, but to show you guys what happens on the bottom of this pan too, which is all about flavor. Look at all that grease. That's all that flavor right there. That's that, that right there is right here. That's body by flavor right there. <laughs> but I do have to start watching the video. All right. Turn it down a little bit. I'm going to get on my soapbox real quick. Now, I know that you can take a can of San Marzano tomatoes, however you say it, and you can crush it with your hands, you can add your garlic, you can add your basil. This was less than 250 for a jar. The jar of San Mazzara, whatever it's called. I know what it's called. I just cannot speak clearly. The point is, that dang can was 448. This has all the flavor in the world you need. And I'm telling you, if you had a blind taste test and you lined up 10 different people and you made this recipe from scratch with canned tomatoes because it's the best tomato in the world, most people are not going to know. So don't feel bad for going to the grocery store, going down the aisle, and getting good old jarred tomato sauce. Now, wine. This is probably the kicker of the kicker. Now you're thinking, God, that's sangria. Hey, we had it in the refrigerator one of the times. We've done it with red wine. The sangria has like a fruity note. And typically, we like our spaghetti sauce not sweet, Matter of fact, we like the acid. You guys see all that browning happening? That's what I'm talking about. Just be patient, okay? That is flavor. That is flavor upon flavor and upon it flavor. It smells good too. It does. Um, we use regular red wine, but I'm telling you, if you have a chance to use the sangria with the fruity notes, the sweetness kind of balances out the acidity um, and the acid in the tomatoes, and that's why we chose to use sangria. So. It's really not that big of a difference, but I think it is big enough to mention. I don't know, just enough to deglaze. What is that, about a cup? About a cup of sangria, and we're gonna put in about one, two, three of uh, tomato paste. Let's see what you got. This is just regular, I love this, uh, container of tomato paste. Squeeze, if you, squeezable. Yeah. If you take the jar and you open it up, you basically just waste it because I can never use that fast enough. But this thing right here. And that stays good in the fridge for a while. Yep. 
So all we're going to do is deglaze the pan with this uh, intense tomato paste. Mm. If you could just smell oh, it. Oh, it smells good. Now you could definitely add your mushrooms, um, your bell pepper, your carrot. You know, if you're trying to make like a traditional bouill um, bolognese, I almost said bouillabaisse, mm -hmm. a bolognese. But this is typically just what we eat, you know, for the week. This our, is... Plus our kids won't eat the sauce if it has any any kind of vegetable. <laughs> well, that's true. And they, I know you cook it a long time and you don't see it, but if they know it's in there... Holy oh, smokes. they will find the one little sliver of onion in there. No, Mom, I'm not oh, eating that. God, just smell that. Already, we're just... Mm. Obviously, you can add more garlic. You can add this. You can add that. What you can add to this is limitless. Basically, I'm showing you the broken down poor man's method that when you go to the grocery store and you have these simple pantry staples on hand, I know you're thinking, why is a pantry staple? In our house it is. <laughs> but just like the store-bought saw, I'm going to reduce this just a second. I'm telling you, the flavors just make it out of this world. It'll go. We haven't made regular spaghetti in a very, very, very long time without making it like this. You want to do one other no-no? Here's a, one last no-no. Here. Where am I going? Oh, he's adding water to the jar. Oh, da 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 The only reason why I'm doing this because I like to cook it. I'm going to add a little bit more. You are done at this point if you don't add water. But I like to cook it low and slow. It's a little early for us. It's 3 o'clock. What happens is all that crispy ground beef. Here, let me switch. Switch. Switch sides. Got it. See how runny that is? All we're going to do is reduce this down, and all that crispy ground beef just starts absorbing and releasing all those flavors, and this will tighten up and thicken up to like a thick ragu, and that's when we eat. So from this point, it's going to be about, I'd probably say about an hour and a half, somewhere through there. You can control your temperature. Obviously, the faster you cook this, the more it's going to boil, the more it's going to evaporate. But from this point, it's done. And I'm telling you, I don't really have to taste it. We'll taste it at the end. I guess you could always taste for salt and pepper, but... Let me taste. Let me it's just taste. intense. It's just the wine, the, the tomato paste. Mm. There's so many ways that this mm. can go, but if you just keep a... Basically, this core method, game changer. All right, guys. Just like anything else that you've noticed that we've done in the past, letting it cool down just goes that extra mile. So it's just not as hot. It thickens up just naturally as it cools down. And this is what we're left with. Now, I don't know if you can tell this. I don't know what kind of video, video quality we have. But you can't tell me that that doesn't look like it's just absolute dynamite. Mm. And you know it's on point. I don't even have to taste it. The wine. Oh, you get the bite of that mm. sausage. Mm. That's it right there. Guys, you can make lasagna out of this. You could put it over uh, vegetables, pasta, anything. God, you could finish it with some heavy cream if you really wanted to go the extra mile. Not today. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound that notification button. God, that's good. Let's eat. I'm hungry. Mm.